think I have over four thousand odd dives. Four thousand. Yes, that's. But what is a night dive like? Because you probably can't see anything. So how does that work? The idea behind night dives is to be able to see the reef in its true color. Okay. And it's absolutely beautiful. Where was your last dive trip? My last dive trip was to the Philippines. Where What can one expect in the Philippines? You can get to dive with the whale sharks, the seahorses, which are tiny creatures. Yeah. They're gorgeous. You spend a lot of time in the Maldives. What is the dive site that comes to your mind? So I love diving with the mantas. Okay. The mantas, these majestic giants, gentle giants, if I may say so. Interesting thing about mantas is they love playing with the bubbles that we let out. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it safe to actually dive with sharks? There are over 500 species of sharks. Okay. About four or five of them are known to be aggressive. Only four or five. Four. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Travel Explore Celebrate Life. I'm your host Neil Patel. Now a few weeks ago we met our friend Sajid who spoke to us about paragliding. So we were up in the air. Today we are going down into the ocean. And I have been scuba diving for the last 5 years, but I am a basic level scuba diver. That means I have a license that allows me to go to up to 18 meters. So when we decided that we wanted to do an episode on diving, not scuba diving, I'll tell you why I said diving and not just scuba diving a little later in the episode. But when we decided that we wanted to do an episode on diving, we got in touch with our friend Sushant, Sushant Doshi, who is an avid scuba diver. he's probably done many many dives and we thought we'll sit down with him we'll understand why we are doing an episode on just diving and not only scuba diving so let's get started with it sushant welcome to the podcast thank you so much for coming i often like to start by asking you to tell us a little bit about yourself so how did you get into diving and then i'll probably want you to answer one simple question like how many dives have you done Sure. Hi, Neil, and thank you for having me over. It's lovely to uh, to talk about scuba diving or just diving, if yeah. I may say so, <laughs> uh, and let people know that if I can do it, so can they. Yeah. And the ocean is gorgeous at the surface, also underwater. I think I have over four thousand odd dives. Four thousand. Yes, that's when I well, stopped logging as I well. I think I have about sixteen to eighteen dives that I have logged in my life. But if you've done four thousand, that's pretty crazy. But how did you get into it? We can add a few zeros to yours <laughs> <laughs> soon as well. <laughs> uh, so, like, like they say, you choose a, a a profession, but your career chooses you. That's what happened uh-huh. uh, with me as well. I learned how to fly airplanes, and somehow I'm I'm stuck underwater, if I may say so, and I'm so, loving it. So hold on, you went from flying airplanes to going underwater. So yes, w- why did you want to fly airplanes, and how was that, and what made you go underwater? So I want to fly those seaplanes, okay. uh, wherein the pilots wear shorts and flip flops. <laughs> scuba is the only other career which would let me wear shorts and flip flops all the time. So you have, a, you have a pilot me. license also. Yes, I have a commercial pilot license. And you license. can fly a seaplane. I think so. I <laughs> see. <laughs> and do you still fly? I don't. I just fly underwater. Oh, <laughs> that's a that's a good way to put it. You fly underwater. Awesome. So you've done four thousand dives. You've done a lot of dives. I'm sure in many places. and all of that so tell us a little bit about scuba diving because whoever is watching this episode or listening to it right everyone has many preconceived notions many people say that scuba diving is very dangerous many people say that you know and if people are like me i watched the movie jaws when i was a child and if i'm scuba diving i will probably have something that will tug at me underwater and i'll die right so Let's let's start the episode by just breaking some of these myths. So the first thing I'll ask you that to scuba dive, right? Do you really need to know swimming? So to get certified, one needs to know how to swim. Okay. Uh, for a basic license, it's two hundred meters of swimming or three hundred meters of snorkeling. Okay. And ten minutes of treading the water. That's what that's, is treading the water. That's like doggy paddling. Okay. You're, you're just staying afloat. Just staying afloat. Okay. Huh. At the at the, at the surface. and that's it. That that's it. And then you need to 
do a few skills, I mean, more than a few skills of what if this happens, it's, it's a lot of uh, what ifs in, yeah. uh, in diving, but there's mm-hmm. always a plan B. It's okay. all about safety. Mm-hmm. So that, and then you do four dives in the ocean along with an instructor. Okay. And you are you certified? There's a bit of theory to do as well. I won't. I won't. I won't so we we'll, we'll get into yes. how to get a scuba diving li- license a little later in the episode. But chalo, we've established that you need to know swimming, but that is more to get certified than mm-hmm. like to actually go scuba diving because then the kit that you have ensures that you stay afloat and all of those things. A second thing, I recently had a daughter, right? And my wife Heta really loves scuba diving, so. Uska aise tha ki, when will we take Raya scuba diving? So I tried finding out and I think the age is what, eight that you can start scuba diving? Like what would you suggest? Okay. So at the age of eight, one can do something called as a bubble maker program. Bubble maker program. Bubble maker program, wherein we introduce the, the child mm-hmm. to the equipment and how do you breathe underwater. So that's done in knee deep water. Where, okay. Yeah. Uh, where, or maybe slightly deeper. So that is at the age of eight, mm-hmm. when they complete 10 years of age, that's when they can get certified as an as a junior open water diver. Okay. That's the minimum age, there's no maximum age as such. So as long as they're able to uh, stay medically fit, fill up a medical declaration, they are good to dive. And like in all of your experience, what is the oldest that someone has come to you uh, for a dive? Wow, somebody was 76. 76. 76 and still diving. So age is just a number, right? Like awesome. as long as you are physically fit, you can probably go diving. Awesome. So just to recap, like as a child, 10 is when you should really start. And in terms of how old you have to be, like as long as you're fit, you can probably That's go right. about it, right? Now um, now that we've done a few of these, um, I've also heard of night dives. Mm-hmm. I personally haven't done night dives because... Like I mentioned Jaws earlier, I think night dives are super scary, at least for me. And that's why in the 16 odd dives that I've done, I've never done a a night dive. But what is a night dive like? Because you probably can't see anything. So how does that work? Sure. So night dives usually start during sunset. That's when you jump in, you'll have two lights with you. One is a primary and the other one's a spare or something that you use in, in case the primary stops functioning. Yeah. So you jump in. Night dives are done at about 12 meters. Mm-hmm. So one meter is about three odd feet. So about yeah. 36 odd feet is what you would be going down to. That's quite okay. shallow for, a, for an advanced open water diver who can go down to about 30 meters. So uh, the idea behind night dives is to be able to see the reef in its true color. Because mm-hmm. during the during the day, the sun is what it has what yellow color or the the light. So during the night dive, you'll be using your torch to see the actually the the white light on the torch makes you see the right colors. Okay, and it's absolutely beautiful. You can see all the all the fish, the, the marine life, and the eels and all those all those creatures hunting. Yeah, I mean they're having it, their dinner, right, or their supper around then. So basically, you, you're saying you can actually see them hunting. Yes. Yes, and that naturally. happens only at night, is it? Or More, generally? Yes, most time. Quite a few creatures are nocturnal, so that's when they step out of their coral homes, yeah, uh, or the crevices, mm-hmm. wherever they are. They they like to chill all day. Mm-hmm. Quite a few sharks are nocturnal as well, so they are they are uh, kind of chilling together all all day, and then they like to step out in the night. So that's one thing. And also, when you turn off the like for a for a for a few uh, for a minute or two, we we like turning off the torches. Yeah, and that's where you see the bioluminescent phytoplankton. Now you mentioned the corals, right? The corals. Um, you told me that the corals lay eggs mm-hmm. and some it is known as something. So tell us about that phenomenon. So it's called coral spawning. Spawning. Yeah. Spawning. Okay. Yeah, that's when they release the eggs out okay. in the out in the water. Mm-hmm. And it's a beautiful event that is kind of coordinated by all the corals around the world. Yeah. And it it depends on the moon and a few other factors as well. And that's something one can experience during night dive as well, because that's when you f- Kind of flash the their light, yeah. your torch or your light at yeah. the at the coral, and it's just gorgeous. I mean, it's it's something that again I'm unable to describe it. It's best to be experienced. But how do you find out when this event is going to happen? Because if it's happening all across the world around the same time, is there like a month of the year that it happens, or what should you look for? So there are calendars. It's good to check with a marine biologist or the local uh, authorities, mm-hmm. which may know more about this. Okay. And they should be able to tell you. 
Okay. But again, it differs again. Mm. It's not a particular day only. Okay. So I may go there. I might do a night dive and I may not see it entirely. So I think scuba diving or diving in general is more like you don't know what you will see, right? Because I remember a few of my friends going to the Andaman Islands and visibility being very poor mm-hmm. and not seeing anything. But another set of friends went the next week and saw a whole lot of different things. So I wanted to ask you, um, when you when you're scuba diving, right? I've often seen there are different types of licenses. And you mentioned that during a night dive, you go to about 12 meters. Now, if I were to go to Maldives, Andaman, mm-hmm. Australia, anywhere, and I just go somewhere and be like, okay, I want to do a dive today. I will do something called discover scuba, correct? And that is about 12 meters, mm-hmm. if I'm not wrong. So would you say that discover scuba gives you that experience that we see on YouTube through all of these amazing videos? Or would you say that you should actually go out and get a diver's license like I did to just get the basic diver's license? What is your opinion? So Discover Scuba Dive is a good starter pack, if I may say so, like a trial version that lets mm-hmm. you go down to about 12 meters with an instructor only. Yeah. Uh, so a few skills are, are kind of taught to you in the pool before you get into the ocean. And then you'll be shown around and... Uh, you get to see a lot of beautiful corals and fish. But then again, you're only down to about 12 meters. And how long it, does a Discover Scuba last generally? It could be, depends on how much air you have left in your tank. So it depends on but, your breathing, but, right? Your breathing, yes. But also, we're looking at, say, 35 to 45 odd minutes. But then that could encourage you to kind of, probably if someone knows wants to learn how to swim, you can learn how to swim, get certified at some point and go deeper because the beautiful shipwrecks and some sharks like to live much, much deeper than, than 12 meters. So it's about encouraging them to try uh, to get a license at some point. Where was your last dive trip? My last dive trip was to the Philippines. Okay. Yes. What, what at, can one expect in the Philippines? You can get to dive with the whale sharks, the seahorses, which are tiny creatures. Yeah. They're gorgeous. You see the pygmy seahorse, which is no more than two centimeters in it's pink in color. And it uh, lives in this coral, which resembles... It actually resembles the coral. It's yeah. very. It's not very easy to spot. Mm. You see, you find them at about twenty to thirty odd meters in the Philippines. You can see the thresher sharks. Okay. Those long, uh, long tails. And quite a few of the macro life, like the sea slugs, which are mm. beautiful. Mm-hmm. They also call nudie branches. So okay. nudie branches means open uh, lungs. So their lungs are on the outside. Okay. They're, they're colorful. They get their color from the the coral that they eat. Okay. So you find way too many uh, kinds of nudie branches and sea slugs in, you know, in the coral triangle. You're mentioning the word shark a lot, mm-hmm. right? Whale sharks, um, other types of sharks. So one, is it safe to actually dive with sharks? Or like there are certain types of sharks that you can dive with and certain types of sharks that you'll probably not dive with. Safe for the sharks or for the us? <laughs> Depends, like, but more so safe for us. Right? Okay. So there are over 500 species of sharks. Okay. About four or five of them are known to be aggressive. Only four or five? Just four. So the great whites and all will be in that? Yes. But okay. then what they do is now a lot of shark attacks happen because there's like a surfer paddling. Yeah. Uh, they are way up, out. Okay. So the shark sees the paddle board and four four legs or four limbs. Yeah, so and the surfer is on the paddle board. On and, the paddle okay. board. Huh. And the shark thinks it's a seal. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sharks don't find us tasty. Yeah. <laughs> We're not their food. So it, it feels like there's a seal or or any other creature that, that could be sharks. Uh, yeah. The feed. Correct. Uh, so they they are very curious and then we start getting a little paranoid yeah. and they they like to hunt they like to ambush okay. so as if the shark if you see the shark the shark may mostly go away okay but if you try and run away then the sharks are so can a lot get like, a little you know they say that if you see a snake just stay still so something similar happens over here that you know if you see a shark don't panic Yes, don't panic. Chalo, now let's come into diving, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and we've spoken about scuba diving, but all through our discussions, all through all of the uh, calls that we have done and when we met face to face, we were like, you know, you men- you kept mentioning free diving, right? So scuba diving, most people know you have what you call the BCD, then you have the tank with you, you have the, the regu- goggles and yes. everything. 
But there is something new that is catching on, which is called free diving. Now, what is free diving really? Sure. So the difference between scuba diving and since we talked about scuba diving, the difference between the two is uh, during scuba diving, you're burning about 300 to 700 odd calories an hour. Okay. During free diving, you're burning about 1000 to 1300 calories an hour. Okay, then that's, that's a good uh, way to start because like if people want to burn more calories because everyone does, everyone wants to lose weight, including me, we'll probably get into free diving. But what is free diving? So free diving is going underwater Okay. In, in a single breath of air. Okay. So you inhale and go down. Yeah. Go say a hello to all the fishies and the corals. Yeah. And you resurface. Now, if I were to think something mm. of free diving, I would probably think that I w could stay down underwater for about 20 seconds or 25 seconds. But that much is not enough to go down, see all of the corals and everything and then come up, right? So how do you train for free diving? So with free diving, even if you can go down to about 20 seconds, you've seen quite a bit. Okay. And you can always you can always resurface, rest, and then go down again. You would be holding onto a life ring, like a life uh, buoy at the surface, and there's a line that is attached to the buoy, so you can grab the line and also go down and explore. Free diving is some of the equipment you'll be using is a mask. Yeah. You'll be using a snorkel, mm -hmm. you'll be using a weight belt, and fins free diving fins are usually longer okay so, you're able so to the cover. longer fins allow you to go faster or yes. something like that yes yes so you go faster and then you'll be able to explore a lot more of the and also just like any other sport it's about muscle memory the more number of times you practice something the more comfortable the body gets i think they say what a hundred hours or a thousand times or ten thousand times I'm not oh, sure really? yeah it depends on and like if your body gets better at that breathing does it have like other advantages in like normal life also? Definitely so, because when you're free diving, your water is a healing medium. So your joints stay fine for a long, long time. Hmm. There's less friction. Now, when you're inhaling, you're filling up your lungs. Correct. You go underwater in one breath only, you have to equalize your ears. So we teach yeah. you the techniques of equalizing your ears as, as, you, as you go deeper. Now, as you go deeper, you would be... Uh, going exploring the reef, etc. And once you're resurfacing, you hold on to a life ring mm -hmm. and you exhale all the way out. So all the carbon dioxide in your lungs is exhaled out into the, into the, into the surroundings. So your lungs have more oxygen. So your blood gets more oxygenated in the next one because mm. all the crazy carbon dioxide is let out in, this, in the system. Ah. So you're, you, you feel healthy, you feel fresh. Also, if somebody's been free diving, they also need to eat right. Yeah. Like healthy food or or, mm. or something of something which will make sure that they are fit mm. to uh, free dive for a long, long time. And it's, a, it's an addictive sport. So, you know, I've grown up knowing that there is snorkeling mm. and there's scuba diving. Mm -hmm. Then I went to Mauritius one time and I realized there's something called an underwater sea walk where they give you this massive mask or something like that. And the pressure doesn't let the water come inside the mask or something like that. Now, our listeners and me have learned that, okay, there's one more sport called free diving. Now, if I'm doing snorkeling, I'll probably wear the mask, I'll have a snorkel and I'll be on the surface of the water just seeing what is there. If I'm diving, I can go to 12 meters, 18 meters. Sometimes if you have the advanced license, I can go to 30 meters and then so on. If I'm doing an underwater sea walk, I'm going to the seabed and walking. If I learn how to free dive, how is it beneficial? Like, do you see something else or does it help in you getting a different experience? So what, like, where does free diving help? So free diving is, is, is a sport where you need lesser equipment than scuba. If I so have it's to say. easy. It's much easier. So all you need is what? A mask, a snorkel, fins and a weight belt. You can jump off a boat and obviously the golden rule to free diving is never free dive alone always with a buddy who's competent mm -hmm. or with a dive guide who knows the local conditions well, who can okay. show you all the cool stuff underwater yeah. and for safety mm, as of well. Course. So it's easy to just jump off. You see a coral reef around, you can jump off. Obviously, you have to be careful of the marine life. They won't come to you, yeah. I mean, not the fish. And that's, that's another myth that fish will come and bite or something. They are, they are doing their own thing. They are, they are least bothered by... I guess you but, just yeah, shouldn't yeah. touch anything, right? Yes, shouldn't touch anything, shouldn't hold on to anything, shouldn't step on corals because they take way too long to grow. Mm. 
So yes. once a coral breaks, it's it's done. Like it'll take too long for it to grow back again. Yes. So so most corals take uh, grow about about a centimeter a year. Oh wow. That's how slow they are. And now with these recent coral bleaching events, where so coral bleaching is when the what happen what happens is when the oceans get warmer, mm-hmm. even by a few degrees. There's this algae called zooxanthellae, uh, which is which lives in the coral. Yeah. Coral is a uh, is an animal that looks like a plant. Mm-hmm. So the 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 algae called zooxanthellae gives it its color. Okay. So as once the temperatures go up, zooxanthellae decides to leave the coral. Leave the coral. They okay. leave the coral. They leave, they leave their house, yeah. <laughs> and they they move away. And what you see is just the calcium carbonate structure that's white. So the colors all gone. The colors all gone. And that's what they've been talking about. Where you know, like we have to really ensure that global warming doesn't get to a point where it gets warmer and warmer because coral bleaching like affects the entire ecosystem or something like that, right? Yes. Now that we've discussed about coral bleaching and we've discussed about free diving, just touched up on it. If I were to make a list down for our listeners to tell them the two differences between scuba diving and free diving, because, you know, India, I mean, everyone likes to give a lot of free advice, right? So whenever I talk about Going snorkeling, someone will tell me, Ari, nahi yaar, scuba diving kar. If I go and tell someone I'm going free diving, someone will tell me, Ari, it's not that uh, safe, mm-hmm. you shouldn't do it and all of that. So just for the regular listener, what are the differences between scuba diving and free diving if you want to deep dive into that? Sure. So scuba diving, scuba is an acronym. It's, it's, it stands for Self-Contained Underwater Breathing Apparatus. So s- scuba is... Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Wow, did not know that. I'm glad you said that. Okay. So that's your tank, the the, the cylinder that you're breathing from and your regulator and your BCD. So that's what you're to be using to go underwater. Yeah. You wear a mask, you wear fins and you're breathing continuously. You're breathing the highly compressed air from the surroundings. That's and it lets you stay underwater for say 35 minutes or 60 minutes, depends on how much air you have left in the tank. Okay. Free diving, the word free diving, it's one word. Correct. It's not because I get asked a lot, is free diving is it free? <laughs> <As> it, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure you, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but it's it's more free because you're using your mask, a snorkel, and fins. Fins. And, and a weight belt as well. Yeah. It helps you descend. Okay. Go down underwater faster. Now, and, and easily, of course. Now, uh, with free diving, you hold your breath. You fill up your lungs, you hold your breath, and you equalize while we go down. You just go, say, uh, go check out the reef or any cool fish that you see underwater. Yeah. Uh, it could be for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, a minute, depends on how often a person has been practicing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you resurface, you come up, you exhale all the way, you do your recovery breaths, and then you can go down again in, in, in some time. <laughs> so the reason I asked that was, again, still breaking down what is scuba diving, what is free diving, right? So in free diving, do we have to do a safety stop or you can't do because you just want to breathe some air by resurfacing? So free diving is very important to equalize. To yeah. pre-equalize, you're prepping the... Your equal- so, you know, there are many people watching mm-hmm. the show who've never been scuba diving. So what is equalizing? So equalizing is, as you go deeper, the pressure increases. Yeah. So equalizing is making sure the pressure on the inside and the outside of the ear uh, is kept the same. Mm-hmm. So if you go down to five meters, the pressure will be at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, if you go down to 10 meters, the pressure is different. It's much Correct. higher, of course. Mm. So you have to make sure. So there are three techniques in scuba diving. One is pinching a nose. And blowing. Blowing into it. Okay. Gently. Yeah. The second way is wiggling your jaw. Okay. Or swallowing. Or What's, swallowing. Yes. What somebody would do in an ekra while it's ascending or descending is use some chewing gum. Yeah, you can't chew gum while you're down there. <laughs> <laughs> Better not. Yeah. <laughs> or or one can yawn as well, right, in the aircraft. Yeah. So it's quite similar. The pressure up in the air is a lot less because the molecules are further away. Correct. The pressure underwater is a lot more because the molecules are much closer. Okay. okay. So one has to be very careful if one wants to stay friends with one's ears after the yeah. dive. <laughs> so this is scuba diving. In mm. free diving, mm-hmm. uh, one can use the Valsalva method, that's pinching your nose. So that's one way of uh, going underwater is is you pre-equalize at the surface, you prep the ears to that particular uh, level. Mm-hmm. And you, as you descend, you keep equalizing. Okay. 
and you're holding your breath you're never yeah. exhaling coming up in free diving mm. is just you straight come up exhaling right you're you're coming up without exhaling so okay. once you're back at the surface that's when you exhale all the you hold on to something exhale all the way and you do three recovery breaths three recovery yes. breaths yes and then you wait so surface. what is your record for free diving how long have you actually done free diving so uh, this is what i tell a lot of my students more than how long you're going mm-hmm. it's about getting the form right okay having a good time mm-hmm. and coming up in a safe manner okay so making sure that they are safe they learn something new they are safe and also they are having a good time yeah i guess that's that's quite important right uh if you've done diving in india what is one dive site that comes to your mind so the india goa in mm-hmm. goa there is this place called grand island grand island grand island which okay. is off the is into the ocean of course mm-hmm. it's off like this is on the flight path to the uh, to the airport okay. the vasco airport yeah uh, so southwest part of it there is a ship this this shipwreck called as steamship rita which had sunk okay like it's it's she's normally called as the susie's wreck okay she's between 5 and 12 meters so the interesting part of a wreck dive is that the wreck which is which is the ship is the made ship, of yeah. in, in metal so it attracts a lot of coral growth okay which now corals also act as good homes and shelters for fish mm. so that in terms attracts a lot of uh, reef fish okay so that's we get to see loads of these snappers groupers you will see banner fish you see moorish idols so many other fish you will see those tiny bait fish as well so that's one right that's susie's wreck susie's wreck you spend a lot of time in the maldives so what is a dive site that comes to your mind so i love diving with the mantas okay. so mantas these majestic uh, giants gentle giants if i may say so mm-hmm. so you have these cleaning stations Mm-hmm. where the mantas just circle around okay uh they are cleaned by the other the other fish and the interesting thing about mantas is they love playing with the bubbles that we let out oh really yes so so, so when you go diving the instructor might show you multiple things that they uh like you let out bubbles and then the mantas can come play with yes it. i mean you anyway let out bubbles but the yeah. mantas like hovering over you oh, wow. it's so we we are we hold on to we we stay at the bottom mm-hmm. uh holding on to something using like a uh, reef reef hook or if the car especially if the current is much stronger yeah or uh, a pointer mm-hmm. and we are just looking at the mantas doing a nice yeah. dance around and the the only thing is that one shouldn't be chasing them because then okay. they they are a little shy yeah they are playful but shy so they mm-hmm. like doing their own thing and then wow. that's that's one gorgeous especially when the when it's mating season mm. or mating time that's when they are the huh. female is or the the male is trying to woo the female <laughs> <laughs> makes 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 so, sense so that was the maldives third one where like another place that you recommend scuba diving in so um the philippines okay. so it it's a part of the coral triangle mm-hmm. so you have beautiful corals the sea slugs there the the thresher shark okay which is quite quite popular like oh. you mentioned at the start also there are sea horses and all that you also get to see yes yes they are they are tiny creatures but then they are gorgeous what detail yeah colors well, um, details free diving what were the last three places you went free diving like you know that you really remember free diving is something that will let so free diving is the next level from snorkeling there's scuba diving mm-hmm where in you are breathing continuously mm-hmm. and you are staying under for the for much longer then there's snorkeling where in you are at the, the surface. surface correct so i call snorkeling as radio mm-hmm. and scuba diving as television oh okay because you are looking at things from uh from a distance mm, yeah. here you are actually in front of it and very close to it that right? is correct free diving is a next level to snorkeling mm. now free diving lets you dive with the whales as well mm-hmm. and the whales i mean it's not very easy to dive with them with with a scuba tank etc yeah because you need to return on the boat and then go somewhere else and go to another place to spot another whale etc because they are they are pretty fast so for whales one can go dive um off the coast of sri lanka mm-hmm. uh, then you can go to mauritius so the blue whale passing happens in sri lanka there's the humpbacks uh, and the sperm whales in uh, mauritius you go to the far east you have east timor you have tonga you have fiji beautiful uh, spottings wow indonesia 
That's that's that. Well, the list can go on. Oh, right? all, all all the. So, how do we get a scuba diving license? Sure. So, to get a scuba diving license, one needs four days. Four days. So, okay. Four days only. Only. Yeah. Only in three sixty five. <laughs> So uh, one needs to do online, some theory online, a bit of studying, watching some videos, answering some MCQs. Mm -hmm. Then two, which so the four-day course can be broken down into two halves. Okay. You can do two days in the, at a pool in the city, yeah. in Mumbai, mm -hmm. and two days out in the ocean at another dive destination okay. with another, with, like, with an instructor. Mm -hmm. So two half days in the pool, Mm -hmm. Over here in the city, you're you'll be taught uh, quite a few skills. Yeah. Like what if your mask gets fogged? How do you clear the fog? What if you need to take out your weight belt and put it back on? So very easy skills. Mm. Most are to do with safety. What yeah. if this happens? Correct. You need to demonstrate that you can swim for two hundred meters mm -hmm. or snorkel for three hundred meters mm -hmm. and tread the water or float. Mm -hmm. For about ten minutes, treading is staying afloat. Yeah, just like, anyhow. Yeah, like, like a like a mm. like a like a polar bear or a <laughs> or a dog. Okay. So that, that and then yes, yeah. and you have twelve months to complete four dives in the ocean. Okay. With wherein the same skills are repeated, so you need to show the instructor that you can do the same skills out in the ocean in two half days. Mm. So four dives in two half days. Each dive is about 35 to 45 odd minutes. Okay. So you start at say 8 in the morning, you're back to your hotel by about noon. And yeah. you can spend the rest of the afternoon, evening. But I will say that, you know, else. once you get back to the hotel, you have no energy to like do anything but just sleep. And because scuba diving in itself is beautiful but tiring at the same time. And I can't wait to explore free diving also because free diving can be more tiring as you have told us. But are there any specific organizations that have the dive shop has to be certified with? Yes. So uh, there, are, there are quite a few organizations regulating diving and mm. making sure that people are following those standards. Okay. There's PADI, there's SSI, which are one of the most more known uh, Correct. companies or organizations governing diving. So if you, you know if you step into a PADI or an SSI uh, dive center. Mm -hmm. The safety aspects have been looked after. People are well trained, and things are are fine. And you are you are in safe hands. Yeah, <laughs> and at the end of it, you get a scuba diving license, oh, like yes. a driving license, right? And when I got mine, I was I was actually quite excited. Now we've spoken about a lot of things. I wanted to end the episode with you and what you do, right? And you mentioned that you train people to free dive, you train people to scuba dive day in, day out. I was going through your Instagram, which is Scuba Reels, as your t-shirt also says. And that's also a company that you have to do under, underwater photography and filming for mm -hmm. multiple things. So if people wanted to learn either free diving or scuba diving, how can they reach you? So they can get in touch with me on Instagram mm -hmm. or my website. That's www.scubareels.com. And do they have to book something with you or you have certain slots that you publish on your Instagram? So I do come out with an underwater calendar for the month. Okay. Wherein uh, we have certain days allotted for a scuba course or a free diving workshop or a free diving course. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's always... It's, I mean, I recommend that people book in advance because there's a certain process to follow. Also, they need to be mentally ready for it. And how much of a time commitment in a day is it if they come for your scuba lesson or a free diving lesson? So the scuba course is yeah. two half days. Like it can Correct. be done over a weekend. Okay. Say like about a 9.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. And then they free to do the rest, whatever they want. And free diving? Rest. And free diving is a three to four hour long workshop. Okay. That's and free diving doesn't need a day. license, right? You're just training people. So free diving, this is we're introducing. So you can think about the workshop mm -hmm. as into as a discover dive, mm -hmm. uh, whereas scuba is concerned. So this is introducing people to the sport of free diving. Mm -hmm. And if that is something that they feel is their jam, then we also have options for them getting certified. Awesome. We can get them certified in the pools, but most times I recommend that people get introduced to it and then go dive in the ocean where they can actually get certified with the fish mm. and the beautiful corals around. I guess, yeah, that's that's a nice way to put it because on my bucket list, at least what I take away from this episode is that I mm -hmm. have a, um open water diver's license. One after insistence over the last 50 minutes, 
I will probably go and get an advanced one uh, as soon as my wife Heta is ready to do that. Um, another thing is I'll probably come to you and probably free dive. And like you've also given us a bucket list of items. I can, there's checking out the manta rays in Maldives, going and checking out the shipwreck in Goa. There is the whale sharks in the Philippines and a whole lot more. So I hope you've given listeners and our viewers also a lot to take from this episode. Do you think we've missed out on anything? So Raja Ampat is one of the most beautiful places uh, in the, the world. Pla- yes, yes. Then there is the Red Sea in, in near in, Egypt. Near Egypt. Then you have uh, Mexico, Sukur. So that's where you can see quite a few of these oceanic mantas. So Mexico is one place that should be there on some people's bucket list. Neil, let's finally come back to India. We've traveled all around the world. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, so we have the Andaman Islands on our to our south east. Mm-hmm. Then we have the Lakshadweep to our southwest. South west, yeah, correct. So they are beautiful places to dive and one must definitely go and explore them at least once. Awesome. I think at least once, no, but people should go and keep diving because you've sent a, set a new benchmark for everyone by saying that you've done more than 4,000 dives. And that's pretty cool. But Sean, thank you so much for coming on to Travel Explore Celebrate Life. Probably the next time we do an episode should be in the water and you can have all of your scuba reels, equipment and all of that. And that'll, that'll be pretty fun too. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me over. Yes, and like you mentioned, the next time we do an episode, it should be underwater. <laughs> we're, be not, we're, not, we're not talking, we are, <laughs> we are showing. What, yeah, and we are yeah, showing. Like the signages would be yes. something. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thanks. Listeners and viewers, thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Travel, Explore, Celebrate Life. As we promise you every week, we come to you with another fun topic. So this was a deep dive into the oceans of the world. And trust me, once you go down, once you do that discover scuba dive or that first free dive, you will realize that the oceans have so much to explore. So thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week with another fun episode. Until then, keep celebrating life. Bye.